Hello, everyone, and welcome to ABG, Asian Boss Girl, a podcast for the modern-day Asian-American woman. My name is Helen. I'm Janet. And it's Mel. So for today's topic, we are going to jump into an emotionally touchy topic about relationships. When we talk about relationships with our family and with our friends, we tend to focus only on the good parts. And these days, what we see on Instagram and other social media platforms is this euphoric state of life that everything is perfect, right? We see couples that are head over heels for one another, but we know that is not a constant feeling that anyone can maintain. It's like, it's like happiness. Happiness is always fleeting, right? And there will always be some level of tension in a relationship. Anything from, I'm annoyed that he didn't text me all day, to, to something as major as cheating and I have to place my mistrust behind a facade of happiness. And we've talked about problem solving in episode 16, um, but now we're going to take it a step further. So what happens when you can't solve those problems any longer? So today we're going to be talking about a very difficult topic, breaking up. So breakups are never easy. They're confusing, they're hurtful. You feel lonely, empty, infuriated, and it's never the same experience for two people. So no matter how many times you've experienced a breakup, it never gets easier. The person you spent countless hours with, binge watching friends, sharing intimate moments, and exchanging secrets that you wouldn't even tell your best friend. That person is no longer playing the role that they once did, and you need to figure out where to take it from there. Mm. So to introduce this topic, we have a special guest today. Her name is Mel, and she is an (laughs) ABG. (laughs) Welcome, Mel, stranger. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I listen to it every week. Oh, we love to have you here. (laughs) It's almost like like you're here with us all the time. I know, right? (laughs) Mel, so uh, tell us a little bit about your your story here that you want to share with us. All right, so just to give everyone some context, it's been three to four months since we recorded the problem-solving episode, which was episode 16. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I'm currently no longer in a relationship. Oh, yeah. Shock. Just kidding. We knew. And I, I mean, you two knew. I, you guys were there for me the whole time. Um, but just to give a, a little background to this episode, we actually ended because we weren't compatible. Um, looking back now, we both walked away having feelings for each other at the time, but we just didn't want to end our relationship resenting each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. As in, you didn't want to just keep arguing to a point where it like kind of ended up in like a blowout, and so it felt right at the time to end it. Then, I think in some ways, yeah. yeah. So, what was, um, if you don't mind us asking for a little bit more detail, um, like how did it happen? Or, uh, well, to be honest, like before the breakup, everything was fine. Oh, in my eyes, everything was fine. Mm-hmm. I, I actually still, I, I remember, I, I still look forward to seeing him. Whenever I, whenever I can, I, he literally just came back from Taiwan. I was like so excited to see him. We hung out the week before and um, you just sometimes don't see it coming. I think sometimes you don't know when breakups are supposed to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or for you guys, did you guys in your previous relationships, did you guys know the breakup was coming? Yeah, I would, I think from my personal experience, um, all of my, whenever I've been in a significant relationship and it resulted in a breakup, which is every single one because I'm single. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm um, on the same boat now, right? <laughs> but anytime it was a substantial relationship, when the breakup happened, it was similar to you, Mel. Like there was something that was not working out and mm-hmm. then a final thing happened, right? Mm-hmm. Like so, a catalyst. Yeah, some the catalyst happened. And, and so if, in that sense, I feel like I always... I was never really, I've never had a breakup happen where I was surprised, Mm -hmm. at least not when it was like, like we were in a relationship and for a good amount of time Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and both like mutually invested. I I feel like the long relationships I've been in, I almost forget like who broke up with who for those. When I said that we both saw it coming is because Mm -hmm. I feel like we would have had multiple discussions and now, oh my God, it's been so long. So, (laughs) (laughs) but I can, cause the, the one I'm thinking about is like from like 10 years ago. I think it's like there might have been a situation where I first initiated the breakup and then we kind of got back together and then he initiated it. So it was like, right. it was just kind of like... It's like a mutual breakup. Yeah. Regardless of because who did the actual like breaking exactly. up. Exactly. Both people, yeah. like we both agreed on like whatever was not working was not working, right? Mm-hmm. But then 
but it's very challenging in when you're like in an emotional state to kind of break it cleanly. And I think also this is something I wanted to bring up for Mel is that when you're younger, I feel like sometimes it's easier to just go along with it. And the, mm. the, the pain of the breakup is more, you're more okay with like avoiding the pain rather than just continuing it. Mm-hmm. But if you're older and, not, and if you're seeking a serious partner, you're more inclined to put up with the pain because any time you're spending in this relationship is taking away time to find your your actual partner, right? Mm-hmm. So did, for you, like, do you feel like that was the case with this breakup versus previous breakups you've had? And I then think, did that play into your, like, decision-making process and stuff like that? I think for a guy, you could call me naive, but I just, I really wanted this one to work. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I want this to be it. I know it's, we only, like, we've only been together for what, like six, seven months? I feel like at this age, you just invest a lot in these type of relationships because you expect it to be the one. So Mel, do you feel like now that you're a little bit older, that's why you were fighting for this relationship more? Because there's now this like social pressure of you being in a relationship and kind of like moving on with your life into marriage and kids and things like that. Do you feel like that's why you were trying to like fight for him more? I don't think so. I think I'm like, like, like we mentioned before in other episodes, I'm super emotional and I think when it comes to love, I will I will fight to the death of it to make sure like I'll beat the the horse. <laughs> no, that sounds weird. Horse. But like it just is that the right is that the right saying? A beat a dead kick, horse. Kick the horse while it's down. Or I don't know. Something. That just sounds really sad now. But in general, <laughs> don't beat no horses. I beat nothing. <laughs> but except for yourself. No. <laughs> that sounds weird. No, but like I just think in general when it comes to romantic relationships, I will fight until nothing can be done anymore. Yeah. You're, and, you are a dreamer. You are the type of person that you know is super like loyal and will. Yeah, fight I want it to work. Life. Yeah, and I think another, I guess to tie back to what you asked, it does play into my relationships now. Is I invest a lot more into someone because I am older and because I want something long term, and that idea of marriage is coming closer. But that's not the core reason why I'm fighting for a relationship. Like with him, I really wanted it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? It's interesting because I feel like with that same question for me, because I'm more serious now, I'm more uh, willing to cut things off because mm. I feel like when I was younger, I fell into relationships a lot, mm-hmm. like without, you know, being like intentional about it. And mm. then now that I'm older, like I feel like I need to be more deliberate. Hey, that's what, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting because like I actually, I never fell into my relationships. Like I, I always, I always saw potential in all of them because that's what I wanted. You were to. always fully in. I was always yeah. fully in, Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel I've I've been in some of those relationships, but I don't. I think maybe it's a personality thing. But yeah, I feel like there's a lot of them that I just kind of like. Oh, I'm not sure, and then it grows over time. Do you think that affects your breakup or plays into how it ends? Yeah, um, I think usually when I don't, if I'm not invested a lot in the beginning, or if I question it, always it doesn't end up working out in the end. And even if I I I feel like there are, those are partners that I can look at and think. We could have a great marriage. I could raise children with you. Mm-hmm. But there was something that was like kind of lacking. Mm-hmm. It wasn't chemistry. There was no romantic yeah. feeling, right? Yeah. Because technically you could work with almost anyone. But mm-hmm. you want those feelings to be there too. No, well, that's an arranged marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, hey, didn't they say like India that practices arranged marriage, they have the lowest divorce rate. Yeah, right? that's true. So, yeah. So uh, so maybe that's the route to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I feel like in terms of a breakup, right, there's always the before the breakup, there's Mm -hmm. during, there's after. And for before the breakup, I mean, it depends on whose perspective you're looking at it from, right? Exactly. Are you the dumper or the dumpy? (laughs) (laughs) So if you're like the dumper, like you know that there's something wrong. There's feelings of wanting to stay in a relationship for the good parts, but there's also something wrong that's making you want to leave, right? And it could be a huge spectrum of things like... For example, if you're in a physically abusive relationship, then it's pretty clear that you should get out of that relationship. But if it's something that it's like arguments about little things that keep coming up, it's like you feel like it's not that bad, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And then other times, the dumper and and the dump bead feels the same, where they're sort of just like on the same page. So you're saying that in your relationship, it felt like you were a little bit blindsided and you didn't even go through this like pre-breakup routine of things building up and it kind of just came out of nowhere yeah and I don't I think when you talk about like I I think breaking up is also a gray area like it's never one person doing it or the other sometimes maybe it's one person making a decision they don't want to make you know I think it's very gray Mm -hmm. so there I mean 
Melissa, you're saying, but before the breakup, were there were there kind of arguments that you guys would have or just differences that you would share? Oh, definitely. I think through the problem solving episode, I shared that we have different problem solving languages. You know, we go about things differently. And I think as much as we try to work through them, we still can understand each other with their problem solving language. Mm-hmm. Like there would be things that just remains unresolved or for this is obviously this is all coming from my perspective i don't want to like say this is how you felt but for from my perspective there are times we did work through our problems Mm -hmm. and there were times where afterwards we're like i was like i felt like hmm sometimes i was looking at that bird's eye view like maybe this is not that big of a deal right and maybe this is something you know what we're gonna get over there'd be other fights that are more significant this is like nothing Mm mm-hmm and I think during those fights, I, we would always say to each other, like, but we still really care about each other. Like, we still really like each other. Let's make this work still. Right. So those problems kind of sometimes got swept under the rug. But I never felt like we need a breakup. And I never, I never had that feeling. Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever, like, plan to break up with someone or been on that end? Helen's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say that I've been on both ends. Okay. I've, been both the dumper and the dumpy (laughs) um from my personal experience in both relationships there were like small or i don't i guess they were big uh but there were issues that were persistent right and so uh when helen is saying you know that two people are never going to be 100 percent compatible so you're going to have small differences or arguments um, and there will be moments where you think hey it's not that bad right like Mm -hmm. this is something i can live with Mm -hmm. but when does it get or what are the things or or is it does it get to a degree where you realize okay this is something i can't live with right Mm -hmm. right um and i think for in both of those situations we had things that we were discussing the ones the one where i did the breaking up i obviously was not sideswiped because like i did i had the conversation but i didn't also pre-plan the timing of it right Mm -hmm. so it was just issues that we were having all you know multiple times and maybe from his perspective these are things that we could work through Mm -hmm. and then i just had a point where I realized this is not something that I can continue with. This wasn't something where we were, it was an argument. It was just kind of a more compatibility thing. Like the feeling, I felt like it was a relationship I kind of fell into. And I wanted to wait to see if my my like buy-in in the relationship or my feelings would strengthen and continue. And it just hit a point where I felt like, it wasn't fair to him and that he should be with someone who really is not questioning whether they want to be in the relationship. So that was, you know, that was a perspective where like I did the breaking up. But when I have been broken up with as well, there are, you know, like issues that we had and I was just, that maybe like if you sat us separately and you talk to us about what was like quote unquote wrong with the relationship, we'd probably have very similar answers. Except for me, it was like a level maybe like three or four out of 10 of mm-hmm. what is worth breaking up over. For him, it was obviously like a level nine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but then that was the thing is like we both knew each other's like things that we're not okay with. But what was not communicated was like how close each of us was to being at our final level of ending right. it. And so when that final discussion happened, like, oh my God, I was like tears and. Done. Yeah. I, you know, and I think as a as as the person being broken up with, you're always like you want to know why. So I remember like constantly trying to have a conversation about why. But of course, I'm like emotional and all over the place, and I like don't want to hear it either. Yeah, right? it doesn't make sense so, to you. Yeah, I think that's really interesting too because you kind of like quantified it that way, right? Because yeah. even though you guys are both going through the same arguments yeah. and the same topics of discussion, like he's perceiving it as much heavier of yes. a conversation versus you're like oh this is only a level three yeah like this is something like, what I, can I can work deal through with. this yeah. is not that serious right but the same thing that isn't serious for me is really serious for him yeah yeah i think as janet's telling her story like obviously my breakup is i think it's still fresh so i'm wondering if like that we both had different levels of wanting to not be together mm. so i guess to rewind back um so me and my ex, we both went into the relationship wanting to be together long term. We talked about it and I thought that was clear. So I think when you guys establish you want it long term, you start investing more and more into one another in the relationship. Right. And so when we fight, I was like, oh, it's that's no big deal. Like we still want this to work, whatever. And I, and I from my perspective, it was mutual. But during the last discussion we had before we actually broke up, because whenever we fight, we, we did bring up like, are we just not compatible sometimes? Like mm-hmm. we don't know. We're not getting each other, but... It's okay. We still really care about each other. Let's make it work. But during our last discussion, that topic got brought up again. And we were really like trying to like dissect it. And we realized we aren't compatible. But at the same time, feelings are there. Like you still really care about each other, right? Right, You're like, how do I, even though 
all the compatibility reasons are right, but our feelings are so strong. Like, what do we right. do in those situations? And so in the moment, obviously, I'm, you guys know I'm emotional, sheep, Pisces, whatever sign I am. <laughs> I just really wanted to be with him. Yeah, you like, wanted to make it work. Yeah. And for yeah. me, I go more on the, I still like you, and I'm more on the emotional side. I'm going to use this as my core reason. Mm-hmm. I still want to be with you. Mm-hmm. And I think he was trying to, like, logically try to figure out, like, what, what is right for both of us? Like, this compatibility thing, it's not fair to you, it's not fair to me, but I still like you. And here I am going, like, I want to make this work. And right. I think he was just, like... At a different level, almost. Yeah, and he yeah. just... I think in the moment, he just didn't know what right. to choose. And then we reached a point, because we've been talking about this for, like, hours. Mm-hmm. I reached a point where I'm like, you know what? You obviously... You don't know still. Like, I know I want to be with you, and... Granted, yes, you're being logical with your decisions because I know you want to be fair to both of us. Mm-hmm. But I said to him, I said, you know, I think maybe I just want to be with someone that knows that they want to be with me. Right. And it's right. like, maybe, and maybe you do want to be with me, but maybe right now it's not the right time. Right. right? Yeah. Because you clearly don't know what it is that you want. And I'm going to be a fighter in this relationship and I'm going to fight for us. And if you're not fighting for us, that's not fair to me. Yeah. Right? And that's, that, I think that's when I knew I was like, I need to walk away because right. I, I've obviously shared with you what I wanted and mm. if you don't want it then I if you don't know mm. I'm gonna take that as you don't want it and enough I, I guess yeah I think back to like past relationships where like for me like one heated argument mm. could really like encompass a whole relationship right and now I think now that I'm a little bit older I do look at like those one argument say it's about compatibility but if you look at it from like a bird's eye view that takes up like five percent of our relationship where it's like a big deal and 95 percent of our relationship is like super good Mm -hmm. right but when you're in the heat of an argument about that five percent that gets so much weight that you don't Mm -hmm. even see the 95 percent that's good anymore yeah so it sounds like from your perspective in this like argument you took a step back and you were like i can deal with this and we can work this out versus maybe he was super like focused on the five percent he was like this is encompassing our relationship and i I don't know if i can deal with it yeah because he was like i would have to i don't want to say i'm giving him credit but i do appreciate him trying to figure out what he wanted even though he was uncertain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i think as just for me personally i just reached a point like i i don't want to be in limbo I want you to right, know right, right, because yeah. I know what I want in a relationship with you or just anyone in general. Yeah. But another thing, I guess I, I don't play devil's advocate, but I guess combining Janet's story and your perspective, you know what? Like, cause it's been a few months now, maybe for him that it wasn't 5%. Maybe it was like for him, our compatibility level wasn't super high for him to want to try. Yeah. And for me, mm-hmm. I was like, no, it's super, it's, it's high enough that we can try. Right. right you know, right, so it's just, yeah. I think as time goes on, we'll tell. Right. Right. It's all about perspective and and how you take an argument and what matters to you more. So, So me and Janet have been rambling on about our breakup stories. (laughs) Hello, Helen. Hi. (laughs) Welcome to ABG. (laughs) Welcome, Helen, from ABG. Do you have any stories of you, like, maybe being the dumper or the dumpy? I've had three very significant breakups Mm -hmm. that was part of like the later part of my life and they're all like super different Mm -hmm. they were never the same so the first one was in college where I was dating this older guy so I was a sophomore and he was a senior (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's what I said too (laughs) but I knew that I liked him because he was that like upperclassman figure that was popular everyone mm. liked him and i was like oh this guy seems to be a desirable human <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah went the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> so then we went out and i realized pretty quickly because i was a short relationship that he wasn't who i expected him to be and i knew yeah. that he wasn't anyone that i wanted to be with long term so in my mind this was already building up but i was also that naive non-controversial sophomore that didn't want to bring up any of these to him Mm -hmm. and also didn't feel like he was gonna receive it well for me so i just never really talked about it with him but there was one day where i was like hey i think this is not gonna work (laughs) and we spent the whole day just analyzing it and talking through it and it was like one of the worst days of my life because I was 100% confident mm-hmm. that I wanted to break mm-hmm. up with him. But, but he, he was saw trying to... He didn't see it coming because you had it had never been discussed. Exactly. No, no right. Problem. And so mm-hmm. he tried to make me like feel bad that I was making the wrong decision, oh, that gosh. I was being naive and young. And I was like, mm, mm-mm, I already know. <laughs> Wait, but before that, did you know you were going to break up with him before that day? 
it was building up in my mind already. Like, I mean, there were like characteristics about him that I was just like, okay, that's, I can't live with Mm -hmm. that in the future. So I knew beforehand, but I didn't communicate it to him until the day of. That was the first one. The other one was when, so I had a very steady boyfriend back in Boston before I moved to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And we were both super comfortable with Mm -hmm. each other. Like he was my best friend and all of that. But I knew I wanted to move to L.A. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to move to L.A. because of his job. Mm -hmm. And he had to stay. He was very career focused. So he wanted to stay in Boston. We both knew that it would be better for us to just not be together. Purely because once arguments start arising, it'd be like very difficult to. And I know a lot of people out there can do long distance relationships. I just didn't think it was right for us. And Mm -hmm. he didn't think so either. But you guys didn't even give it a try. So, yeah, we didn't we didn't even give it a try. But it was like one of those things where I was just like crying my eyes out at the airport and throughout the whole plane ride and this family with a kid next to oh me was gosh. like handing me tissues. Like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. California. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was like more of a forced breakup that none of us wanted to go into, but we just mm-hmm. knew that it was the right thing it's to like do. like situational. Yeah. Because you guys were, mm. This is, sorry, this is just interesting because I never got to like a long-term place where like, you know, long distance was an issue to talk about. But do you think because you guys reached a comfortable level that mm. I guess like the romantic feelings kind of fizzled out and that's why it's easier for me to, for you to make that decision to not be together and not mm-hmm. try out long distance. Yeah, I think that that was a part of it. Like we were going out for almost a little over four years. Oh, so wow. it was a pretty mm-hmm. long period of time, um, like through our college and after college too. And I feel like that feeling did fizzle out, but there was also this assuredness that we were still good, right? We weren't at a point where we we're like, oh yeah we just aren't compatible or we're not right. working out for very specific reasons. Like we were good. We were completely fine. But at the same time, that level of excitement had already kind of dissipated. Yeah. So it kind of made sense. Mm. Also. It could also be that if you guys, if it was a different time, right? If you guys were older, that that is, and you were both looking for marriage, then yeah. maybe that would have, it would have oh, worked. Oh yeah. Out. True actually. Yeah. That could have been the one, but yeah. timing wasn't right. And I yeah. feel like that happens a lot more when you're older. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually saw this quote, um, I read a lot of quotes when I'm going through a breakup, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) No, this is like a, this is a talk show, but he was saying, he's like, I actually truly believe that you can meet the the right one at the wrong time. Like the Mm -hmm. perfect, like your soulmate. Mm, It's just timing. I also believe that there's multiple soulmates. Yeah. There's multiple people that you could be with, but if you're not ready or if he's not ready and you guys aren't together at the same time, you know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's like a crazy thing where it's like, you have to find this person that you're attracted to you're compatible, compatible with yeah. and I know. the timing has to be perfect yeah. for both of you yep what and the they have fuck? to like you too i know it's just it's fuck i, I fucking hate that <laughs> <laughs> wait helen what is your last breakup story um okay so last breakup story so this one was probably the more difficult one because it wasn't like a by default or it wasn't one that i was 100 percent confident mm-hmm. for sure about it was one where I honestly felt like I was okay and I was the one that was for sure like fighting for the relationship. Kind of like you, Mel. I felt like this was a really good relationship and I didn't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. But I think on his side, he was going through a lot of things and he wasn't 100% confident as much as I was, Mm. right? And so for me, I'm like, boy, like I can go find (laughs) someone else who is 100% confident. So there's a little bit of just like, what the fuck? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, you're not going to grow while you're in a relationship with mm-hmm. me. You need to figure this out on your own. So regardless of like, I can't even say like who broke up with who because there was there was like enough of these conversations already yeah. where it's like, okay, I think we're at a place right now where you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> so that happened and that is a much more difficult breakup because from my perspective, I didn't want to break up. Yeah. But you kind of just have to like accept it mm-hmm. and just try and move on with life yeah i'm just like (laughs) nodding along i think it's really hard because um in those situations your feelings are so intact it wasn't Mm. like my feelings just disappeared or i stopped like caring about him or Mm -hmm. having these feelings i just said feelings so many times (laughs) but um it makes it tougher to move on when you're inve- still invested in someone. Right. It wasn't like someone cheated on someone or like you did something so horrible. Yeah, I don't want to be with you. Right. Right. It was just, it was a situation where you're both still emotionally invested, but you know that what you're looking for is not, is not there at that moment. Yeah. And then in that moment you choose to walk off. And that's, so that is a key word that you chose, right? Mm-hmm. Versus not having a choice. And when you, whenever you have choice, it gives room for you to question. Yeah. 
So these three breakups, I would say that the consistent, I guess, messaging or tips for during a breakup is to be respectful of the other person, right? At one point in time, you love this person mm -hmm. a lot. And during these last moments, it's probably best to be just respectful for what they have to say. And so be compassionate, but also be honest about why it is that you're breaking up with them, right? So instead of saying like, it's not you, it's me, it's like, there's probably a part of it where it's them, right? Yeah. And this is like almost the best learning opportunity for someone to understand what it is about them that maybe they're they're doing that they're not even realizing. Mm -hmm. And then they can be a better person for someone after you, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, it's always better to talk through something and have that person change for you during that relationship. But sometimes that's just not the case because yeah. of pride, because of whatever it is, yeah. right? And even if it is the whole, it's not you, it's me, meaning it's literally like, I just don't feel for you that way, you should tell them that. And that's a hard thing to say to someone, but mm. if they hear that, they can move on. Versus yeah. if you give them a reason that they can sense is fake, they may always wonder. Right, right. Yeah. right. There will be questions and there's never going to have closure. Breakups are hard, man. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like uh, Helena's saying, like, you know, you want to have these conversations and be honest, but sometimes if the breakup is happening in a heated discussion and you're emotional and you're crying, maybe that's not the best place to have that conversation, but know that probably it's good then after, after you have that, take some time away and then have some sort of closing like conversation with each other mm -hmm. because it is how you treat the breakup will help determine how fast you get closure from it, right? If you mm -hmm. get the right things, if the right things are said and, and you can feel like you can move on, it's more quick than if you're kind of like tiptoeing around it and then the healing process is kind of like never, it's like dragged on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. Do you guys ever establish boundaries? Do you stay mm. friends with the person or are you kind of like, all right, time to go our separate ways. <laughs> um, I definitely cannot stay friends with the person afterwards because yeah. I'm so attached, yeah. you know. Um, and I make it clear, like after this breakup, like we, you can't, you can't, you can't treat, you can't treat me like like I'm your girlfriend anymore. Like you can't text me, you can't call me because yeah. it just makes mm -hmm. it a lot harder for me to move on. You know? Yeah. I think I definitely, when I was younger, I struggled a lot with this because I'm also the type of personality that doesn't like to have like negative with anyone. So mm -hmm. right after I'm like, but we can still be friends or like, that's cool. Right? Oh, right. But yeah. that's, it's, that's such a mistake. Now that I'm older, I know it, it hurts more to cut it off, right. but you need like, that is what will help both of you heal faster. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you cut it off forever. Like, cause I, 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 yeah, I'm friends with all my exes, but most of them, it took a good year or two. So it's like a year or two where you don't talk and you have your space and then you can come back together when emotions have calmed and you've had closure and then you, because there's some reason that you guys were connected and you got along very well, right? Yeah. yeah at mm -hmm. some point. You need to be at a place where you're okay with seeing them with another person. Ooh. I feel like. Ooh. That's oh, a good man. test. <laughs> that's a really good test. That's if it like, still makes you like sick and sad and blah, then, you know, for yourself, maybe don't like. <laughs> ah, that's a great <laughs> Mel's no, like I'm not there. Yet. I'm not. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not there yet. That's okay. It's it's very recent still. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll get there one day. Okay. So we talked a lot about you know what to do during the breakup, what happens before the breakup. I think since I'm currently going through my healing process after what happened, I could talk about what happens after the breakup. I think for me in the beginning, it's so painful. I was telling someone it actually feels like I can physically feel my heart hurting mm. like in the first week it was like it was just like a sharp pain yeah and it's then, probably like beating faster oh of course so it's like ah you're working too hard <laughs> i don't know yeah and then um you guys know i'm really emotional in the first month or first week i i cry every day it's mm. very normal and i think something we don't talk about a lot is you know now we're working women we have to go to work every single day and put on a face and yeah be like the best performer on our team still how do you do that when you're going through something so heart-wrenching like a breakup All right yeah and you know for me i still really care about him and i i still have feelings for him you know so i call this the wave because i think as you're getting better day by day regardless of how better you are you have 
this wave of sadness just come on onto you and you don't know what like when it happens or why it happens or why it's triggered yeah mm-hmm. why, why it's triggered you know why it's happening yeah. but at work i remember i would be totally fine and be making like my afternoon tea and all of a sudden i just feel sad like walking the hallways and i i don't i don't know what to do and i at one point i like looked at my stylist and i was like can i just can i just bar your closet mm-hmm. she's like sure and i just sat there and i cried like mm-hmm. in between the racks of clothes because it's just hard you know like you're, this is someone that you talk to every single day that mm-hmm. was part of your life that you invested all this time in and all of a sudden they're just cut off completely right and you just feel like a sense of emptiness like people right. people relate going through a breakup like going through a death and it's kind of true because this person is no longer there mm-hmm. providing you all these things that are comfort love just being there for you having someone to talk to every single day mm-hmm. so i call this like random feeling the wave of sadness and to be completely honest i still get it it hasn't been super long since we broke up but looking back it happened every single day but now it happens less frequently which is great that knows that i'm moving on but i think that's something a lot of us go through when we go through a breakup or right after a breakup Mm -hmm. and this analogy of the wave is great because it's like something that washes on very powerfully in the Mm -hmm. beginning but that definitely starts to trickle away and has an end right so for anyone going through a breakup If you're feeling like crazy and crazy emotional, know that that's normal and Mm -hmm. also know that it will slowly go away. And waves also hit a beach and clear the beach and make it a new... (laughs) Make it beautiful! (laughs) Actually, I think about that all the time, like footprints in the sand. Waves always wash it over and starts it afresh. Yeah, that's very true. Wipes it clean for you. Yeah. Yeah. So Mel, what are some general things that you've been doing for yourself to get yourself out of the wave? standing up walking (laughs) actually going to the beach no um, actually i've been doing that too um one of the first things i've done i did was i bought i bought two journals Mm -hmm. i bought one journal called a gratitude journal it's kind of cheesy but when you're so sad you just want to be reminded of the little things and be of the happiness yeah because it's hard to actually for you to actually feel that sometimes you Mm -hmm. know so i have a gratitude journal and i just have a plain journal where i just write down my thoughts and the process of healing because I think you could be you could distract yourself by hanging out with your friends and right. like watching shows but if mm-hmm. you don't really tackle what happened or process yeah. what happened you're not gonna really fully heal right. right yeah and so one of the first things I wrote in my journal is um I wrote about I wrote the qualities that I was really confident in myself that I would want a partner to love too mm-hmm. because when you're going through a breakup you think about did you not love this about me? Did you, was I not right, enough? It's only mm-hmm. negative thoughts that fill your head. Exactly. And so you have to remind yourself, these are the qualities that I possess. And these are qualities I know right. that's going to make mm-hmm. someone stay. Yeah. And these are qualities I, I want someone to appreciate mm-hmm. and cherish. Yeah. So I wrote that about myself. I mean, call it tuning my horn, but I worked, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think that's incredibly important, like after a breakup, right. like especially a breakup like that, where it's like, okay, well, why the hell did you break up with me in the first place? Like, I don't really, I kind of know, but I still don't know. And yeah. so you have to like almost feed your own ego to mm-hmm. be like, you're still fucking amazing as you are. And someone else is going to appreciate these things and, and maybe look past a little bit easier the things that you're still working on, but be there with you as you're working through those rather than feeling like they can't be with you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a gratitude journal is great too because, Mel, to your point, when you're going through a hard time, it's like you are default set to focusing on all the negative things. And so when you're you're actively focusing or choosing to focus on positive things, that indirectly lifts your mood too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think that's a really great approach. Mm-hmm. And I guess the other obvious thing you do is you hang out with your friends. Like I think I hang out with you guys a lot more. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I don't know, like I... Another thing, as you're going through the healing process, you really are able to take a step back and ask yourself, why am I doing the things I do? What do I want and need in someone? What do I want and need in myself? Right. And I I have to say, like, during this time, I was able to take a step back and ask myself, why are we doing this podcast? What does this mean for me, actually? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was able to really appreciate what we're doing. In my gratitude journal, they asked, like, what are you thankful for today? It's like, I want to say thankful for my friends because it's just like, Oh, 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 stop. Don't do that. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Fucking hate being emotional. But no. Mm, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. My falsies. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't mess up your extensions. I know. I just got so them done. Good. <laughs> no, but it's like when you're going through pain, it's yeah. like when. Mm, mm. <laughs> no. Oh. This is so lame. <laughs> no. 
It's also 11 p.m. on a week <laughs> night. I'm really Mel, tired Mel is going work. through a hell of a work week. She's uh, essentially doing two jobs at once right now. Yeah, that's true. Because she got her promotion. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about that later, too. <laughs> but... Sorry, what was I, what was I saying? You're, but you're thankful for us. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like, a, for me, maybe it's like a thankful for like a deeper level because it's just like, all my friends have just been there. Yeah. And been there in a way it's not just like, oh, yeah, you could talk to me. Like, they actually been there helping me go through this and making, like, just being there. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. It's just really, it makes me feel really lucky to have my friends. Mm, yeah. And it's not just like one friend. I have so many who have been there for me. Yeah. And you guys are definitely some of them. Yeah. Up. And it's almost like take a step back. It's like now, I'm not saying you didn't appreciate us before. Yeah. But I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying that like now that this event happened, you kind of realize who are the people that are actually going to be there for you when you are going through something where exactly, you feel yeah. like you can't be alone and you need to talk to someone. Yeah. Right. So it's like a think blessing also, in disguise. Yeah. 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 Positive yeah. things too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't expect to be so emotional. But talking about us. Like, I thought you were going to be emotional talking about the breakup, but... It was before. <laughs> but I think another thing we could talk about, yes, you're healing, and these are the, you're, there's some good things that come out of the healing process, but you'll hit some barriers. I mean, I'm pretty yeah. sure you guys relate to this. Mm-hmm. I was messaging you guys. I'm like, when you break up with someone, you still care about them so much. You just want to know what's going on with them. Like, I yeah. miss you. I want to know if you're okay. And like... yeah. And another factor now that we're in this whole te- technological time is freaking Instagram and Facebook is, are there. And yeah. it's like, you can cut off communication and not be like, quote unquote, friends anymore. But if their face is popping up mm-hmm. at you. On your feed, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know what fucking sucks too? Because think about it. This is the person that you probably interact with the most on these social channels. They're the first story that pops up. They're the oh, first yeah, like yeah, that yeah. you see. You're just the like, algorithms are like, this is someone you want to know about. Right. And <laughs> you, you like click on it. You're like, do not. I don't want to see any more of this content. But right. then it pops up again. You're like, I don't want to see any more of this content. Like, Instagram, you're not only helping my breakup process right now. <laughs> but I, I think it was really hard for me with Instagram and like, whatever you just want to know what he's doing yeah and yeah. at the same time i feel like social media also puts out like the happiest of people yeah so when you see that he's happy that's only like one like literally life, one yeah. image like maybe only one percent of his day but that's what you're seeing and that's everything that you're assuming that he's going through that he's just completely fine yeah as right. is. and it's like okay i'll be real like when you're going through a breakup and you have social media you're like oh my god who are you are you hooking up with someone already oh my god you're probably yeah. talking to some girl and all these things you're just like oh you like, become like this like intense stalker yeah i'm not gonna admit to that but <laughs> i'm not gonna admit to that. well i'll admit to it i feel like <laughs> uh, yeah I it's hard? hard because that's if this is a person you're constantly thinking about and then now you have access to a tool to like essentially peek into their life right and you're like oh wait who whose photo did you like oh yeah oh it's a girl oh wait are you seeing her? Yeah. You know? yeah. And then you go down this rabbit <laughs> you hole. Go down like, the rabbit hole. Who's this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> right? And plus there are now these social etiquettes you have to follow. Cause you know, I still care about him. We're still on good terms. Like I still right. have feelings for him. Like, or I'm still getting over these things and I don't want to unfollow you. That just seems so weird to me. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking like, what should I do? Cause I, I, I can't do this to myself anymore. Like this is preventing me from moving on. I was talking to you guys. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like I have people say that's too too much to unfollow someone. And other people are like, no, block them right away. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. I and for myself, I just you know what? Like I I can't be seeing this for for the time being. As much as like I want to be cool with you, not now. And so I actually ended up messaging him, which you guys know. And I just said like I can't. What the fuck? Did like, I say? You, you said it's like it's difficult for you to still see him, like on. So he, you just told him you were gonna unfollow him, just for a common but, courtesy, yeah, you but know, like for with like no real like bad bad like, intent, yeah, yeah. behind it. Yeah. I actually feel like when people unfollow you, that's when you know they had real feelings for you. Because, yeah. Right? Versus if someone mm-hmm. is can continue seeing your face pop up like that, unless they just have really good self control and not checking their app and stuff. But I feel like generally. Um, that's true yeah yeah like if you unfollow someone it's like i can't live with seeing you yeah like or i need i need i was emotionally affected enough to need some time off from this Mm -hmm. right uh versus just having like the cordialness of like oh because it's like it it comes off as weak for me to have to unfollow you or unfriend you but if this was a significant person to you and this was a significant relationship it should be understood that you need just the same as you need physical time apart Mm -hmm. like you need technological stuff. time apart <laughs> apart right that makes sense. Still <laughs> I feel like I've been rambling on about my breakup process because I guess I'm currently going through it but how about you guys like what did you guys do like do you guys unfollow did you guys ooh 
Um, I was definitely a stalker. <laughs> here. My investigative skills got so good. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I also didn't like want him to see it, so it got it got. I don't know. It's, oh my god! You created a you false created a fake account. account. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, wait. I think I might have, or like I had my sister look at it or oh. something like that, and like, what is he doing? I don't know. It's something so <laughs> stupid. Um, or yeah, I would like look at through one of your accounts or something and be like, Hey, can you play his story over there? <laughs> Actually, wait, I remember now that happened for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, like at the same time, you don't want to show that, Oh, you're following their lives and mm-hmm. constantly checking up on them. Yeah. Like the first person to look at their stories, even yeah. though I would have been right. So there's a part of like the self-control that you can't control. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It's like, it's okay. And that's during that time, you just, you, you miss that connection and you just want to see them. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I feel like I started getting over it when I started doing things like for myself. Cause I found that yeah. the times when I was doing that the most was when I was at home by myself. Right. Like, and just like weeping and like, yep. I need to see what he's doing. But then I started boxing classes mm. and doing this like BBG program, workout program and going on runs a lot more and meeting new people. And, uh, yeah, meeting new people <laughs> <laughs> that kind of helps too. I'm not saying that that you should like find a rebound and like yeah. do all of that but it does fill that like emotional void mm-hmm. for even if it's temporary <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of rebounds like it's i could say from my from my perspective i can never do rebound re- rebounds i can't even say the word because i don't do it because mm-hmm. i i don't want to give myself emotionally if, to anyone else mm. that i'm not ready for but i think that when you're when you're at a stage where you're capable of having feelings for someone else then you know that you're getting better right because in the beginning it's like not possible it's not even yeah you can't even look at another person with any type of romantic anything right. so you you know that if you're able to like go out on a date or like to be in a club and look at a guy and be like hey he's cute it's yeah. like oh that's progress right mm-hmm. <laughs> but even like while you're going out with them you're constantly thinking about your most recent other ex person. Yeah. and you're comparing them to him and so it's not like you're like completely okay to just go out and emotionally invest yourself in like someone else that's not going to be as easy mm-hmm. but i feel like it takes your mind off of whatever you're thinking about and fills up that emotional connection that you need with someone at that moment yeah i think f- for me allowing time to grieve like it, oh, you know agree. you don't want to sit and like mope for too long but you need to get the feelings out and you need to feel what you're feeling because otherwise it'll be repressed right mm-hmm. um and i'm the kind of person that like works through stuff by talking so versus like journaling and other things i'll just i have like close friends that i'll just talk and it's just like word vomit like mm-hmm. not making sense or whatever and then and i think and that helps me process and oftentimes when i talk through like what happened i, I talk through my thoughts and my feelings and doing it multiple times with multiple people it helps me like kind of process and get past it mm. um and then to helen's point like start i just start doing things that like fill my time for myself um mm. and then and then it gets better actually some of the best times when people reinvent themselves is after a breakup totally Cause Cause you start, agree. yeah you start looking at yourself and you're like what what was i doing wrong like why was mm-hmm. i that bad like i'm really not that bad but i could also be better exactly right. so that's when you start doing things that you've never done before yeah i actually was thinking i was talking about this with my friend um this breakup i kind of mentioned it earlier but this breakup has gave me a different a different sense of quarter life crisis because when i was going mm-hmm. through my quarter life crisis i was re- reevaluating everything but this breakup has allowed me to do that again with myself yeah like what 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 are they, like what are things i value and whatnot like i said the podcast mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. but um this is kind of random, but I don't know why, but whenever I go through a breakup a month or two months later, something in my professional career happens. Mm. Mm. And that happened again this time. Yeah. So I recently got promoted at work mm-hmm. and I actually was anticipating or hoping for a promotion within my team, but a new position opened up in a different team that I was much fitted for. And so I, I switched over to their team and I got a promotion and the title changed. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like, how did this, mm-hmm. why did this come now? You know? Mm-hmm. And this happened with all my other breakups. Hmm. It's just like some sort of karmic link between your romantic yeah, life and it's like, your professional yeah. life. It's like the universe saying like, hey, I think I need you to refocus on something else. Or it's like, mm-hmm. hey, life is not that bad. Right? Yeah. But I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah. You know? I don't know if you guys ever had situations like that. Uh, no, I don't get promoted every time a breakup happens, I wish. Uh, should I just go through more breakups to like, reach, <laughs> yeah, the, reach the top or something? <laughs> like next time you're going through one, just be like, ooh, something good is going to come out of this. It's like, I'll become a director or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Um, I just want to say thank you to you ladies and to our listeners for following me on my beginning, middle, and end of my romantic journey. Um, I'm still going through the healing process, but I have faith that I will make it through. Mm. And I guess another thing I want to bring up, or for for, people, for those of you who are also going through breakups, it's it's hard it's hard because we're so fixated on the good memories we have with someone, but when breakups happen, it's because it happens for a reason, and we may not see it now. But I guess we'll find out later why it happened. Yeah. And the first few days, weeks, or even months are going to be hard. Um, But one morning, you're going to wake up, and suddenly that heartache won't be there anymore. And you'll be able to go on his Instagram and not feel jealousy or sadness and be able to, you know, sort of just reflect back on the good times that you guys shared together and focus less on the negative and be like, oh, he helped me to become this person that I am today. Yeah. Yeah. And for anyone out there who is going through a breakup or um, has gone through breakups, if you have stories that you'd like to share with us, write us at asianbossgirl at gmail.com or visit our website at asianbossgirl.com. We're also on social media, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye!